मोदी साहब बगैर परमिशन के वहां जाके नवाज शरीफ साहब को मिले उन्होंने उनके साथ जब भी डाली तो क्या भाई उनको उनको राष्ट्रभक्त नहीं मानोगे आपका यह व्यवहार अनुचित है कि आप अपने आप को प्रधानमंत्री के बराबर सोचे हम सरकार से पूछना चाहते हैं कि क्या आप पाकिस्तान के साथ दोबारा बातचीत करने के पक्ष में हैं? Good evening and welcome to Political Exchange. Our big focus today is on the future of India-Pakistan ties. Pakistan's new Prime Minister Imran Khan today called for a dialogue with India to resolve differences. He said that the best way to alleviate poverty and uplift the people of the subcontinent is to start talking and trading. Prime Minister Modi in his letter to Imran Khan said India was committed to good neighborly relations with Pakistan and pursuing constructive engagement as well. About the controversy around Sidhu's visit, sources confirm he had the clearance, the political clearance from the Ministry of External Affairs. So what is the larger picture here? Is India waiting and watching to see how much space does Imran Khan really have? Is India ready to start a dialogue and at what level can we remove trade barriers as a starting point? Let's take this discussion forward. We are joined right now by former diplomat Anil Trigunayat, Congress spokesperson Sanjay Jha, Narendra Taneja of the BJP. Narendra Taneja, uh, Imran Khan in his opening speech had said that if India takes one step, Pakistan is willing to take two steps. Over the last couple of days, Imran Khan has tried to make all the right noises by saying that his focus is on trade, on boosting the Pakistani economy, removing malnourishment and having good relations with India. Is India taking this positively? Does the BJP support a dialogue with Pakistan now? No, you see the Prime Minister sent him a congratulatory message. He, the Prime Minister also called him and also said that, look, we are for constructive relationship with all our neighbours including Pakistan. But the question is that, you know, uh, 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 Mr. Imran Khan has just taken over. It's not even three days. And uh, we have to wait and see. You see, the point is that, you know, all that he's talking about, even before he took over, he has been talking of certain things. I mean, but we need to see whether he's able or he's allowed to walk his talk. You see, the important area for us is, of course, trade is one, but the important area for us is that what do they do in terms of, you know, sending uh, terrorists, exporting terrorism, and shutting down those terror factories, uh, you know, in Pakistan. Mm. I think, you know, uh, he needs to kind of take, take action, mm. shut down all those terror factories first, stop export of terrorism, stop targeting our okay. you know, innocent people, civilians, and our mm. military personnel in Jammu and Kashmir. And, and at the same, as he said, you know, the, the, you know mm. it's very easy to talk. But he has just taken, we all know there are several power centers in mm. Pakistan, but if he really wants peace with India, he wants peace and stability in the entire points. region, he needs to walk his down. So we will allow, we will allow him time. Let's see what he's, if he's lot, allowed to walk the A lot of sticking points. He needs to walk the talk on trade, on terror. Remember, 2611 masterminds, Hafiz Said, Zakir Rahman, Lakwi, they move around freely and one of them even tried to launch a political party. Anil Trigunayat, if I can put this question to you now, there was a lot of controversy, a big political controversy over Navjot Singh Sidhu's visit to Pakistan as a private citizen. Hugging... Uh, uh, General Bajwa talking to Imran Khan. A lot of questions were being raised. But we are getting to know from the Indian government that he had the political clearance from the highest level. So the government might say that this was a private visit. We don't have anything to do with it. But do you get a sense that India, the Ministry of External Affairs and the government is observing how things are panning out, how Pakistan is reacting, how much control does uh, Imran Khan really have? You see, firstly, we have to uh, congratulate Pakistan itself for ensuring that there was a democratic transition. Secondly, uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan, even before he took over, he has been talking about talks with India, dialogue with India. And India has never shied away from any dialogue. In fact, India has gone way ahead several times. Several steps have been taken. But Pakistan has been retrogressive mm -hmm. and aggressive uh, in mm -hmm. its approach all the time. I mean, you remember that uh, in December when uh, Prime mm -hmm. Minister just uh, cut short and went there uh, to Nawaz Sharif's house, that was something very out of box. 
and which was exceptionally good uh, gesture on our part. But mm. it was, uh, you know, re retaliated mm. by uh, Pakistan through a Pathan court and whatever. So now nothing has happened on all those major issues that are of concern to us. But I'm very happy. Another CBM that we have done is Prime Minister mm. spoke to uh, Imran Khan on July 30th. He has written a letter on August 18th. In both of them, we have mm. said we want constructive engagement because for mm. India's progress also, it is essential that we have mm. a quieter Pakistan, a progressive mm. Pakistan, and a virtually a prosperous Pakistan. And India has always mm. tried to work that way with all its neighbors. Okay. I mean, as regards uh, the terror is our biggest okay. concern. Sanjay Chha. And if Pakistan is able to address it, and if Imran Khan... <coughs> yeah, I'm going to come to the issue of terror as well. That's very important that that will be a priority in Indo-Pak relations. But uh, Sanjay Jha, if I can put this question to you, Congress and BJP almost uh, disagree on each and every issue. But do you agree with the government and the BJP on this one that if we need to initiate a dialogue with Pakistan now, then we must see Imran Khan walking the talk on trade, on terrorism, and also on the 2611 trial. Uh, yeah, Parikshit, uh, you know, with Pakistan, we have a, a historical, complex, bilateral relationship. Uh, there are several variables. Uh, I agree with you completely that one very critical and probably the one that will be non-negotiable from the Indian standpoint will be the violent terror attacks uh, you know, across Indian borders, uh, particularly what's been happening in Jammu and Kashmir and mm. the international borders. I, I think the real challenge mm. for both our countries is that when you get an opportunity to engage with each other, I think we should look very carefully mm. at what those options mean. Now, you have at the moment a new democratically mm. elected government. I know there are allegations that, you know, that Mr. Imran mm. Khan's government had a huge backing of the Pakistan army. Uh, having said that, that, if there is, however, mm. because of that itself, I mean, if there is a military endorsement of uh, Imran Khan's uh, diplomatic, uh, shall we say, initiatives with India, then it does provide a window of opportunity. Now, mm. obviously, there is no denying that these are going to be sensitive. I think India will be correct in saying that you cannot uh, have a dialogue if you do not mm. dismantle the terror infrastructure. Uh, yet, you know, at the same time, you will, and I think okay. you should be smart enough to anticipate that Pakistan will raise the Kashmir issue. Mm. These are things that, you know, have been the traditional, uh, yeah. I would say, you know, the kind of barriers in a, in a more open discussion. So I think this is a, this is a moment for mature political okay. and, and diplomatic, uh, shall we say, handling. Right. Mateen, uh, Mateen Heather, we've got spokespersons of the ruling party and opposition here on the panel, and both of them agree that Pakistan must act on the issue of trade. Remember, our trade is just about $2.28 billion. That was a 2016 figure. It must have gone down even further. Imports from Pakistan are even lower. Uh, when, you, when, it comes to, when it comes to the issue of terror, we're still awaiting movement on the 2611 trial. Do you think the new prime minister will act on these issues? Because be it the opposition, be it the ruling party, it seems that their priority is making sure that terrorism from Pakistan stops. Yes, thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, definitely uh, uh, selecting this very interesting, very hot, and uh, indeed very sensitive topic. So uh, once we, once you are talking about uh, no trade uh, between India and Pakistan, of course, it should be the top priority of uh, both governments, particularly the new government in Pakistan, to uh, definitely give uh, boost to bilateral trade. So the bilateral trade is also definitely facing a uh, number of hurdles. It needs to be uh, negotiated. It, uh, the mm -hmm. traders and the business uh, community should be uh, facilitated. Uh, of course, uh, the new Prime Minister mm -hmm. of Pakistan, who is tweet on uh, Sindhu issue as well, and in response to the letter uh, by the Indian Prime Minister, that letter was uh, yesterday disclosed uh, before the media by the new Foreign Minister, Shah Mahmood Qureshi, uh, that Indian uh, uh, Prime Minister mm. Narendra Modi has written a letter and in which he has indicated or hinted at resumption mm. of dialogue. So it was hint. Mm. It was not a complete mm. offer. So the way Indian media uh, definitely played with yeah. that particular thing, it was, uh, it was very unfortunate, I think. 
whatever is now we are witnessing at official level mm. between india and pakistan between the two governments mm. two governments looks very serious very mature okay. and uh, there is not a single negative word please let me finish mm. there is not a single negative word from the both nadeli and ashabad right. from ashabad mr khan but indian media is trying to destroy everything whatever has been built in last 48 hours on sindhu issue he was personal friend of mr khan mm -hmm. he came to snabad and met prime minister khan mm -hmm. attended the oath taking ceremony so if uh, he was at the president house if he has mm -hmm. met pakistan army chief what's wrong in it so right to so courtesy does demand that uh, mm -hmm. he has to definitely interact with number of mm -hmm. uh, with the number of guests over there and talking of peace is not crime this is what okay. sindhu says this is what this is what the pakistani yeah, yeah. prime minister says yes hmm Yeah, and you know, Mr. Mathin Haider, there are diplomats in India who feel that this is important. People-to-people -people contacts are important, yeah. but politically, Mr. Sidhu's visit has not gone down very well in India. But uh, Mr. Trigunayat, if I can put this question to you, Mathin Haider, political analyst, was also talking about Imran Khan's priority as far as trade is concerned. Now, India-Pakistan trade has been very low over the last couple of years. We're yet to get the MFN status from Pakistan. The Vaga, the Vaga uh, route. for uh, import of pakistani goods is yet to be opened so these are sticking points as far as our trade relationship is concerned uh, mr trigunai do you feel that if imran khan is able to address the issue of trade then that could give uh, a window a window to narendra modi to start a dialogue with pakistan well the trade is uh, uh, is also there but the india's biggest concern has been the Uh, you know cross border terrorism and uh, the people who are just more extremists mm. are moving around and they have been part of the open uh, narrative mm. which is what he has to control and i think if the army is on mm. his side which is supposed to be backing mm. him then they should take care of it and the pakistan also mm. has suffered uh, from them because as i say in our sanskrit this thing the terrorist terrorist or terrorism is like basmasur it's going to burn down everyone it's not going to leave pakistan as well mm. so they have to be they have to mm. take care of it as far as uh, trade mm. is concerned as you know that most of our trade was not directly with pakistan but it has been going through dubai and other countries mm. so it has been far more than 2 billion dollars uh, in any case mm. but this is i am like for example you mentioned about mfn status mm. under the wto rules it is compulsory for every country to provide that uh, status pakistan has not done that if uh, imran khan does it then obviously mm. it will be a good confidence building measure he has to come out on these things very clearly mm. i mean i'm i'm sure the initial statements are very positive and they give a lot of hope at the moment and as you know in diplomacy it's hope that's very important mm. and prime minister modi has gone two steps ahead already in mm. this uh, saying that we are ready for the constructive engagement mm. but then the, this has to be terror free south asia so i'm mm. not going back on fourth on this but it has to mm. be a progress on all fronts and then only things can move forward and it is good for both mm. the countries that's what okay. i feel all right we'll request all our panelists uh, mr mateen heather who's joining us from pakistan uh, mr trigonayd narendra taneja sanjay jha to stay with us we're taking a short break here on cnbc tv 18 when we return we'll take this discussion forward <laughs> 